This video is going to work out the algebra of how we get to find the amplitude of the steady state response for a given damped forced oscillator with a given force of function at a certain frequency. So we're starting with a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals f zero cosine of omega t. I want to look at the steady state response, which is the solution to the non-homogeneous equation. I want to figure out what the coefficients a and b are going to be and how that relates to finding the amplitude in the form r times cosine of omega t minus phi, which I know I will get by combining the sine and cosine functions that I get out of this undetermined coefficients approach. So basically, I'm looking for this r. This is what I want to figure out and get to from this method. So we're going to guess a cosine omega t plus b sine of omega t, and we're going to plug that into the equation here. If I do that, I will get the following. That's just plugging the derivatives. Now I want to group each set by the trig functions attached to it. So from this, I will see I have a cosine of omega t times a negative little a big a omega squared plus a little b big b omega and then plus a c times a. And I see a sine of omega t times negative a big b omega squared, a minus little b big a omega, and a plus c times b. And I want this to equal f zero cosine of omega t. So now I just wanna match up my coefficients. I want a times negative a omega squared plus c, which is from the first equation here plus b times b omega to equal f zero, that's the coefficient of cosine. And then for sine, I'm gonna have that a times a negative b omega plus b times a negative a omega squared plus c should equal zero. Because I wanna see f zero cosine and zero times sine the other side. Now I just wanna solve these equations for big A and big B, that's my goal here. So I'm gonna multiply the top equation by a b times omega, I'm gonna cancel out the a's first, multiply the bottom equation by a c minus a omega squared, and then add them. If I do that, I will see, I will have a times negative a omega squared plus c times b omega, a negative b omega, same thing, those will cancel, so I'll get no a's, and I will get a b times a b omega squared plus b times c minus a omega squared squared equals f zero times b times omega which means the coefficient b is going to be f zero times b omega divided by b omega squared plus c minus a omega squared squared then i can take that and plug that into this equation back here to get that a times negative b omega plus f zero b omega over that denominator times c minus a omega squared equals zero. Move this to the other side and divide through by b omega to get that a will be f zero times c minus a omega squared. And then the last thing we want to do is figure out r. So r is this total amplitude and we know r is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And so we can just plug it in and work that out, which looks really nasty, but a lot of things simplify here. These are the same denominator. And when I add them, I will notice that on the top, I will see b omega squared plus c minus a omega squared over that same thing here, squared, so one of those will cancel. I can also pull an f zero out of the square root. So I will see that r, is f0 times the square root of one over b omega squared plus c minus a omega squared squared. The last thing I wanna do here is get this into a slightly more usable form. And the more interesting form to look at here is the expression r divided by f0 over c. The reason why this is interesting is the idea of r is the amplitude of the resulting oscillation. 
F0 over C would be the amount that the spring would be compressed by a stationary non-oscillating force of magnitude F0. So this ratio here sort of models how much does the fact that I have this oscillation in this force of frequency omega affect the resulting amplitude. If I just push that standard force, I get F0 over C. With this oscillation, I get R. How does those these two things compare? That's what we're going to look at. So if I were to get this into that form, I could think about this as I would need to divide both sides by F0, which is easy because the F0 is sitting out front, and then I would need to multiply both sides by C. So RC over F0, which is the same thing as above expression, is equal to C and this nasty square root. Now what else can we do with this? Well, I can use the fact that this omega zero we talked before, this omega zero, which is the natural frequency squared is C over A. So I can write then that C minus A omega squared is C times one minus A over C omega squared which is C times one minus omega squared over omega zero squared. And so that will then let me rewrite this as a square root. I'll put the C squared inside. This is B squared times omega squared. Plus now that's C squared times one minus omega squared over omega zero squared squared. And that form is a little more reasonable. But to get to an even more compressed form, I'm going to do one more simplification. So going back to our idea from before, omega zero squared is C over A, meaning that B squared omega squared, I can write as C over A times B squared times omega squared over omega zero squared. I've just now multiplied and divided by omega zero squared here. And then I'm going to use that to combine this coefficient with this coefficient here to then cancel c squareds and get that my rc over f0 is the square root of 1 over b squared over ac times omega over omega 0 squared plus 1 times 1 minus omega over omega 0 squared squared rc over f0 is capital gamma times omega over omega 0 squared plus 1 minus omega over omega 0 squared squared to the minus 1 half power, where gamma is b squared over ac. So this result should only depend on the frequency and the coefficients of the problem, and it tells us how this amplitude is going to depend on this frequency. And we'll analyze sort of what this can do and what this looks like when we look at examples of different values of gamma and how this function looks over a range of different frequency values.